where was I born? Uh, I believe I was born in Fairview, Ohio, which is a suburb of Cleveland, 5, 10, 15 miles away from where I live now, Bay Village, Ohio. Uh, I don't know. My brother and sister were born in Cleveland, but I think that's because the maternity ward where I was born shut down, so my parents had to switch hospitals, is all. I don't know. Nondescript little town. I like Bay Village. I like where I live, or lived. Uh, it's a nice little, nice place to grow up. Terrible place to be a teenager. High school was really where uh, I got into band as something that meant something to me. In elementary school or junior high, it was something I did because my parents said I had to do it <laughs> until I was a freshman in high school. But, you know, after that first experience in the high school band, it was a much, much different story. Uh, it was something that, you know, I ended up taking three classes a day out of nine in music. And even though I had no desire at all to study music as a, as a, to be my job, it was something that really relaxed me and let me get away from the stresses here and there and the rest of life. Uh, in high school, um, in the fall we did marching band. And then winter and spring we had a concert band. Um, I also was in the orchestra for two years and in a jazz band for two years. Um, marching, marching was marching was what it was all about, really. Um, marching band in America is something you can't really describe unless you go to America and go to a high school football game or a college football game and watch a marching band at halftime. Um, <clears throat> it, it's a lot of work for 11 minutes of performance on the field, but it's a great, great experience. A uh, lot of camaraderie. I think that out of every friend I had in high school, there's only one guy I can think of out of my circle of friends who was not actively a participant in the marching band to some degree. Whether it was a player or a dancer or announcer or whatever. Uh, there's only one friend who was not in that. Everybody else was. You have a plan for your life when you're 18 or 19 years old, or some people do. I did, and I pursued it and eventually decided, you know, <laughs> that wasn't exactly what I was after. Um, and, you know, you live and learn. Mistakes I made, I won't make again. The day that my parents took me down to OU for band camp, or maybe pre-college orientation, that was pretty big. Uh, graduation. The day I decided not to get married, I think, is... If you want to talk about key moments of my life, that is the one. Um, that, that is the... That is the it's like the Hanshin earthquake moment, you know. Everything changed. Everything in the world changed the moment that I said, no, this can't be, this is not happening. It has to stop right now. Or else. And that decision was enormous. I still think about it. Every once in a while it pops. Every once in a while, no. It always pops itself into my mind. It's always there because, you know, you go on with your life after something like that. 
and you say, God damn. Every day you've got to say, what if I'd gotten married? You know, anytime something good or bad happens, it's always there. And if happens, that's the moment. Um, that, that was it. That's why I'm, that's not why I'm here, but that's why I'm here. If you can understand that. It's not Y, big W-H-Y, but it's Y with a small W-H-Y. I wouldn't be here if I'd gotten married. I am here because I didn't. Where's that lead? in elementary school on either, I don't know if it was a school trip or a family trip to the Cleveland Art Museum. Cleveland Art Museum is probably one of the greatest things in Cleveland. Um, World-renowned art museum and it's free. There's no admission charge except for special showings. Uh, and they have one of the largest collections of oriental art in the United States. Um, and I, w I will admit that when I went there as a kid I was largely fascinated by the knight's armor room, <laughs> you know, where they have all these medieval swords and armor and stuff, and that was pretty cool. But, <clears throat> I don't know, was, at some point in there, uh, J Japanese statues intrigued me. These statues of Japanese warriors, I don't know if you've seen them when you enter temples. Usually when you go into a temple, in the main gate on the left and right, there's a big statue of this sort of mean-looking, demonic dude with all kinds of weapons. And, and I thought those were just fantastic. They're really, really interesting. And then, probably in 5th, 6th, 7th grade, somewhere in there, Shogun was on TV with good old uh, Richard Chamberlain. And uh, it had to be earlier than that, 3rd grade elementary school somewhere, and I remember watching it and just being like, wow, what a place. Reading the book. At some point I started studying World War II and found that I was really interested in the Pacific War more than the European War. Uh, eventually studied Japanese history. And so the, for a long time there's been a, a, an interest in the back of my mind in Japan. Um, and even when I was engaged to, what's her name, uh, we talked about coming here to work. So when I was in high school, when I was a high school student, I wanted to come here as, a, as an exchange student. When I was in college, I wanted to come here as an exchange student, but never did. And there was discussion even with the ex-fiance about coming to live here to work. Never happened, never would want to do it, but uh, it wasn't a direct result of breaking off my engagement that I'm here. It's because there's always been an interest. Uh, in the end, it was because, the, you know, I was like, wow, what am I going to do? i got to do something. Let's go see it. You know, it's a question of finding yourself. you got to go somewhere where you aren't comfortable where where what you do and what you say is always a question in your mind what should I do what should I say and then become comfortable with yourself in that uncomfortable situation to learn who you really are and that's what I was after let's go someplace completely foreign and see what you're made of. Can you hack it? I suppose I have. Six years. Six, six years.
when I got off the plane or the first couple of months. Um, I was amazed. And not entirely in, and that's not an entirely positive statement. Um, your image in the West is of a country where things are ordered. Technology is fabulous. And when I came to Japan, man, nobody had a personal computer. I would have guessed that if you took a poll of the of a, a random sample of the people in Japan and said, do you have a computer in your home? Something like 15% maximum would have said yes. Uh, which at that point in 1995 in America, I mean, geez, you were already at 30, 40, 45% saturation. My initial interview with the company I worked for, they asked me if I wanted to live in a big city, a medium city, or a small city, and I thought, well, you know, if I want to learn Japanese, small city's probably good. So that's where I, that's what I did. I wasn't a big city boy at the at that time, and uh, you know, so went off there. It was a good experience. I liked it. It, it was more the ugly side of Blade Runner than I had expected Japan to be. Um, I had sort of expected J Japan to be gleaming and new. And having read so much Japanese history and, and culture and that and hearing, looking at Japanese art and Japanese aesthetic, you expect the buildings to represent that and they don't. The buildings are bomb shelters with windows. And that's why Kyoto, for me, it, it represents Japan for everybody, but it represents Japan in a different way for me. You walk around Kyoto and you have these fabulous temples and shrines. But next door to them are these square concrete block huts with glass windows that look like they were slapped up in 20 minutes. And nobody seems to mind the fact that you have this dichotomy and, and that's what Japan is it's a nation of contradictions it's a place of contradictions it's people where it's a place where people say something and mean the other where people don't say something and mean what they should have said where people do what they do but their feeling is the opposite but they do it because they have to and that's that's what Japan is and when you first come over, that's that's a pretty hard thing to realize. It takes a lot of time. Uh, as time went on over the years, I think my contact with foreigners has sort of gone down. Um, in terms of the number of foreigners that I'm friends with as I move from place to place, I would have considered in Toyama that I had four or five good foreign friends. In Gifu, I would say I had two. In Kochi, one. And so, you know, that, that number goes down. I don't know why. Oh,